Hey guys, Drew here over at Rev Hiker Outdoors with another knife review for you. Today we have the Spyderco Tenacious, and uh, this is the Chinese model. Now let me just say this, I've never been a Spyderco guy. I have never liked the looks of this. I've tried a couple of them in hand that uh, people had, and I, I just, I didn't like the thumb hole that much, but uh, I had a friend at work, my second job, that was nice enough to let me borrow this. I told him, hey man, you know, uh, you let me carry that spider coil around for a week or two, and I will put a crazy edge on there for you. And he said, yeah, sure, no problem. So that's what we did. Uh, I took it, and I got it home, and immediately I took the Lansky to it, and I did, uh, you know, I did a pretty good number on the blade. Really, uh, now what I will say about this in sharpening, the the grind was very even. Uh, as far as quality goes, I know this is a little bit of a sidetrack, but as far as quality goes for a Chinese knife, uh, I was very impressed with all of it, with how it locks up. Now it is a little, uh, the lock bar, you know, it's pretty far over, but I don't think that's that much of a, a big deal. The the lock up as far as side to side. Up and down, there's zero side to side. You can feel a little bit of wiggling, but every single knife just about is going to have that unless it's ball bearing. But anything with bushings, you're going to have a little bit. So anyway, G10 scales, they're nice. Anyway, back to my main point. Wanted to hate this knife because, well, there's a couple reasons. Everyone's always talking about Spyderco. Oh, my Spyderco, 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 Spyderco. It's so great, and I just love it, and blah, blah, blah. And I'm, Usually, I'm, I'm like the anti-bandwagon guy. So if everyone is saying that this is the most amazing thing in the world, I'll, I'll say, nah, it probably is not that great. It's probably just hype. Um, that being said, after carrying this for a week, I still think it's ugly, but it works great. And I can't argue with that. It's for, uh, you know, and ugly is a subjective term, so... Let's all remember that. This is strictly my opinion. Um, just not a huge fan of, of how it looks. And I have, I'm kind of biased because, well, the, see, I, I have a hard time getting this thing to deploy the way I want it. And I think there's a couple reasons for that. Number one, I think I'm spoiled because of my access locks that I have. I, I absolutely love how the access lock works. And I think for one-handed opening and closing, you're going to be very hard-pressed to beat the access lock. Uh, I think the detent is a little too tough on this, and I think it could use with uh, loosening the pivot just a, just a touch. I think that would make it a little better, because even with this lock bar fully disengaged, when you ram this all the way to the side, there's still you know, some resistance in this thing coming down. Or, or flipping out it still has you know it doesn't float freely like say this would Benchmade Osborne when you depress this lock the blade just swings down and actually it'll swing shut without any flick of the wrist if you just do it right so I'm kinda spoiled in that regard but they are different knives, they have different locking systems, and that's kind of, you know, that's the nature of the beast. Now, other people, I see them flick these things out, and it's like effortless. Maybe I just haven't had enough practice with them. I'm just not, uh, I do a little better with my left hand because I am lefty, but it's a little inconvenient because the clip's over here. Again, my friend let me borrow this, and he's right-handed, I didn't want to mess things up on him. But, I don't know, I'm, I'm terrible at that. Anyway... I prefer the access lock, but I think this is really a great knife. Like I said in the beginning, I wanted to not like this thing, and, and I, I'm really having a hard time. Anyway, let's get into uh, some of the cutting tests. I'll show you a little bit of how sharp it is. Let me roll this up here, and uh, I'll show you. Let's see. So, and it's, you know, pretty sharp. Shaves readily. So... Uh, you know, it's not dull by any stretch, and, you know, really the, the full flat ground blade is, uh, is absolutely great 
for slicing and for I've used this for like kitchen tasks and that type of thing. Let me get in frame here. And uh, man, it is just it is great. Now this is some pretty flimsy, almost see-through paper, and you can see it just just right through it, just right through it. Um, as far as a slicer goes, thing is absolutely great, uh, and it'll still it'll still still tear through you know thicker stuff as well. This is more like cardstock, um, and this will just you know even doubled up. See, it's doubled up. It just, just right through it. You know, absolutely effortless. So for slicing, cutting, things like that, things that you actually use a knife for, man, awesome. As far as EDC goes, I think this is, it's a great knife, and and like I almost hate saying that because I so wanted this thing to be terrible. That being said, it is still eight CR thirteen MOV. Now some people. Think, oh, that's fine. You know, who cares? Um, I, I have a hard time with it only because I'm spoiled with S30V and 154 CM, which, in my opinion, outperform this significantly. Now, I have not cut away this whole video, and I don't plan to. What I'm going to do is make some cuts on this thing on the whole blade here. Let's make some cuts. And then I'm going to try at the end of the video to shave like I did before. So let's do some little fine tasks here at the end. Now, this wood that I'm using is very dry maple. And this, this is some tough stuff. It's uh, certainly not pine. It's definitely rougher on your blade than pine would be. So I think this is a good test. Um, maybe people don't do this every day, but you know this might simulate cutting up ooh, a big load of boxes at work or something like that. But I just, you know, for comparison, I've done things like this. I've done a boatload of whittling with my Osborne or with my mini grip and still had that you know razor edge at the end of it and this thing really does just kind of float through stuff um, this coating is actually holding up pretty well by the way I'm not I'm not going nuts on it because I'm not going to return this guy's knife to him and half the coating <laughs> worn off so I'm not going to kill this thing but uh, I'm certainly putting it through its paces I'm trying to keep it more on the on the edge, on the cutting edge, than scraping along the rest of it. Um, as far as like tight work, you can actually you can see here. A lot of times, I like just pulling the wood across the blade like this. But for detail work, it's quite good, and I like the blade profile as far as usefulness. It's got a, a, a useful belly. I don't like super exaggerated bellies and I, I don't like flat either. I think the most useful all around is a knife with a, a decent flat area, which none of this is totally flat, but a decent flat area and then a, a nice belly at the end. I think I think that is really nice and uh, I do like the full flat ground blade. Okay, so it's still going through it for the most part, and again, this is, see, right here where I did the bulk of that, that tough work, it is, it is having a little bit of a, a hard time getting through there. Hmm. It's catching right on that edge. Maybe that was just me. All right, let's do a little bit more. If I have to, I will uh, speed up this video so you guys don't have to sit here and watch me 
cutting for six hours, but I don't want to cut away because I don't want you to, you know, think that I'm being biased or anything like that. Okay, well, I can feel it. I can feel it biting in a little bit. It's not uh, gliding through like it used to. Um, still feels pretty good. I think, I think this portion of the blade fared a little bit better. I think that's still pretty sharp. I didn't use that as heavily. Um, still doing a pretty good job. So, let's see. Overall, guys, I think um, you can definitely feel I don't think it's shaving sharp there anymore. <laughs> Ouch. It is, but you gotta, you got to dig in and leave some good red marks, but it'll still shave. Um, overall, I have to say I'm very impressed with this knife. I did not want to be, and... Honestly, I think the heat treat or whatever uh, Spyderco does to their 8CR 13 MOV, it seems to hold up better than some other brands that I have owned uh, or used like, uh, well, I don't want to mention names, but this holds up better than most that I've tested, well, actually all that I've tested for this blade steel. And I've seen uh, in other tests that guys have done on YouTube that Spyderco really does do a good job with, with their heat treats and, um, you know, steel for steel, theirs usually uh, is, is quite good. So uh, this is kind of my reluctant good review of this knife. And unfortunately, I'll probably be looking to buy one. And I say unfortunately because... You know, it might take me a little bit. I'm a little, little tight right now, but uh, you know, I don't know. Maybe I'll trade for another knife. Who knows? But as far as uh, the overall impressions on this knife, I hate the fact that it's made in China, but man, for being a Chinese blade, it it sure does impress. And this performs like knives that cost quite a bit more. So this is my reluctant praise of the Spyderco Tenacious. And uh, I'm willing to bet that the rest of the Spyderco line is uh, just as good. So for all you Spyderco freaks out there that absolutely love these things, um, I won't say that I'm a full convert because I still think they're ugly, but it's a great knife and I can't argue with the function. And I've said in my other videos that I am a function over form guy. So looks like I'll have to bring a Spyderco into the collection. Well, guys, thanks for watching. That's my review. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Please uh, don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe and share this video if you enjoyed it. Uh, thanks for watching. God bless and have a great day.